Thank you. Hi. Greetings. My name is Randall Miller, and um, I'm actually an intern again back at Team Challenge. Um, it's my third time repping again. I took a couple of year break from the institution and then just came back with them. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but I usually start with a little bit of an introduction. It goes way back to the 50s. Um, David Wilkerson was a, a country minister, upstate New York, uh, reading in the papers about the death and destruction of heroin addicts on the streets with the gangs uh, in New York City. And he took this little trip, seen the newspaper, and he thought, I'm going to do something about that. And he got in his car and he literally drove into some of the worst parts of New York City you've ever seen. Um, and he, he began a ministry on those streets. Um, and he began to have some success. He began to uh, um, see uh, salvation and change in these young men and women's lives. And, and um, he wanted to take that to the next step by making a permanent presence on those streets. And this is what happened to him. I'll read it right from this book called The Cross and the Switchblade, which is kind of the story of Teen Challenge and how, who we are and how we got going. <clears throat> he had this vision one day. He said this. He said, one morning, just after I'd stepped off the boat, I walked downstairs um, and I suddenly saw my old dream take on a new stance. It sprang to mind, it sprang full grown to mind the house that I had dreamed of. We would call it a center, a teen challenge center. It would be located in the heart of the roughest part of the city. And it would be the headquarters of a dozen or more full time workers who would share my hopes for young people and those who, who saw the, it would be shared with those who saw their wonderful potential and the tragic waste. Each worker would be a specialist, one who, would work with boys and one with the women. There in that Teen Challenge Center, we would create an atmosphere that was so charged with the same renewing love that I had watched on the streets, that to walk inside that place would be to know that there was something exciting afoot. And here we could bring boys and girls who needed special help, and they would live in an atmosphere of discipline and affection, and they would participate in our worship and in our study. And they would watch Christians growing together, working together, and they would be put to work themselves. And it would be an induction center where they were prepared for life in the Spirit. And that was the hope way back when. And it's still happening today. I think right now we're in every state. We have a male program um, in 49 of the 50 states. Them doggone Montanans, I'm telling you. Huh? Those cowboys, we, we have tried and failed in Montana. But there's a women's program in Missoula. And every state has a Teen Challenge Center in it. Um, we're in 200 countries in some form, shape, or another, but there are a lot of centers all across the, the country. In Minnesota, at any given time, there are, uh, it's the largest treatment center in the state of Minnesota. Um, that's outpatient, inpatient, short-term, and long-term. Uh, it just continues to grow. It's grown so much since 2013 when I actually uh, came on board. It's been staggering for me to keep up with and watch, and I left for two years. It came back and it's changed so fast and so much. It's so exciting to see, to listen to the miracles, to listen to the things that God is doing. It actually, uh, you know, as I watch Rich Sherber and Sam Anderson and some of these guys tell me about the, just the incredible, over-the-top stories of things that God is doing, um, it brings a smile to my face as I think about it. Uh, so that's who we are a little bit. And what we do today... Um, we run, um, in Brainerd, we have a short term and a long term. Um, so the short term is anywhere from 60 to 90, 30 to 90 days. And then the long term program averages about 13 months with the short term worked in there. Um, we have outpatient, a number, I don't know, it's men and women's up there. Um, and that's who we are. I wanted to share a little bit about who I am. Uh, even before we got going too. Like these men, I grew up in a very, like a lot of these men, um, I started out very early in drugs and alcohol. And um, my life took a crazy turn in high school. Both of my parents used, we used at home while I was in school. Um, it was uh, chaotic, uh, to, to say the least. Um, I, at the behest of a judge, got accepted into the military when I was 18 years old. On my 18th birthday, I had a DUI. Um, and I, 
the recruiter came to court with me and got me in the army. Um, and I have been in the military for 30, I'm still in. Uh, I don't know how long I've been in, but it's a long time. Huh? <laughs> that's, a, that's how old I'm getting. Um, so through the ups and downs, through the use, through the years of use, um, I was still in uniform in one form, probably in the reserves. Uh, but some, during some of the worst of it, I was still in uniform. God is good. Um, I would have never been a chaplain if I ever gotten nailed or gotten a felony. Um, so sooner or later, somewhere in there, 2005, I ended up becoming an army chaplain. That's crazy in and of itself. Because my military career started with a judge. And it ending with me able to give back something I never thought I could. Um, but like these men, it began with Christ coming into my life. The story, the change, the power, the, the most incredible pieces the, 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 where it starts to make a, a, a dramatic difference begins to happen when Christ enters into my life. And when I begin to get surrounded by a community of believers uh, who believe likewise. And that's our hope for our program, is that these men come in and so many times the ministry that they're experiencing is right here. It's man to man. It's, you know, it's them trying to encourage one another to do the right thing, to stop, to, to, you know, to quit running, and to face ourselves in the mirror. Um, and that's probably the hardest work we all got to do, I think. So with that being said, um, you know who we are, we sing, and we do testimonies. So I'm going to invite the gentleman up here. If you'll come on up and join me, gentlemen. Good morning. My name is Gabriel Green. I'm 25 years old. And my story starts at a very young age. Um, I was probably six or I guess I'm not really sure how old I was. I kind of blacked this all out, but I was molested by a babysitter when I was very young, six to eight years old, somewhere in there. And that kind of changed the course of my life. I mean, in the fact that I made the conscious decision that I wanted to be I wanted to be bad. I wanted to do... I thought that was right, in a sense. You know, I thought that since bad things happen to me, I was meant to be a bad person, and that's just how the world was going to work. Um, um, by eight years old, my brother, my oldest brother, was getting me high and drunk and uh, smoking cigarettes. Um, and that just kind of... It was like whenever I could get it from my brother and eventually progressed into me being an 11 and 12 year old um, smoking pot daily and by 11 was the first time I was incarcerated um, which was the beginning of really the real end because I think I was had somewhat of my innocence left until I was locked up with like 17 year olds when you're 11 years old and then it's kind of downhill from there um i keep saying them um uh i keep uh thinking back and thinking about what i could have done better and what i could have done to get myself out of the pit i found myself in but now it's i have less regret i have less shame because of the man i am in christ today um I stand on that to, if I can stand on the what he tells me in scripture, I don't have to go back to that person I was. Because for my entire childhood, from the first time of me being incarcerated until now, that I'm 25, I spent most of it in and out of jails, um, juvenile prison, to treatment centers and all these things and I would it was just a pattern go away get out do okay for a month or two fall on my face and same thing back and forth back and forth and I think it was all perpetuated by my shame of who I had become of being molested um, and a lack of love therein by abandonment from my father and things like that so what I've learned since coming to Teen Challenge is that vulnerability is key. Um, it isn't a weakness. It's the only way to true healing, I would say. Um, that 
that um, I guess what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say is without Christ and like the word that I stand on, I stand on Ephesians 1 and 2 every day just so I can like look myself in the mirror for the things I've done because I am a saint through Christ. That's what Christ looks at us like. When, you, when you're under the blood of Jesus, God doesn't see you as that sinner, shameful person anymore. He sees you as a saint. And now that I have that in my heart, I'm, I'm changing every day and growing. And um, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm I just like, I'm living a mystical life. And uh, I, I'm just glad where I'm going. Thank you very much. Good morning, church. I'm a part of the restoration program. So I went through the program five years ago and um, graduated the 13-month program. And originally from the cities, um, last five years I've been living in Aiken. And um, uh, I'll, I'll start from the beginning of my addiction. It was outside of high school. I grew up in a very Christian family. My grandfather was a minister for 45 years. And... Um, Started out in Marble as a minister and uh, ended up in Robbinsdale. But, um, you know, I, outside of high school, I just ran to possessions and, and money. I thought that was the most important thing in my life, and with those, I could do anything instead of Christ. And um, when life happens as it does, um, I didn't handle it the right way. I didn't have Christ in my life. And, um, I was married at a young age. Um, my wife was pregnant at 21, and uh, we had a stillborn boy. And um, without Christ in my life at that point, I didn't know how to handle it. So I, I went to alcohol and uh, drank for years. Ended up in treatment several times, uh, a lot of 30-day and outpatient treatments. And uh, at 25, we tried again, and I, I had uh, another boy. He was uh, three and a half months old. And by then, um, between inheriting money and, and making money, um, I was going to be a stay-at-home dad and retire. And um, he was three and a half months old, and he passed away from SIDS. And um, that crushed my soul. I, I couldn't understand. Uh, that was my second son. And, and life was so good at that point. I thought, wow, I've got all this money. I've got all these possessions. And I could do so much good for my son, and why would you take him away from me? Our, my wife and I's um, addiction went out of control. We started drinking. Drinking wasn't enough. We went to, from drinking to cocaine, cocaine to crack. We both fell ill. We, we uh, started pain pills, a lot of pain pills prescribed. And um, after a year and a half of that, fell into heroin. Um, Years after my wife or my son passed away, my wife passed away from a heroin overdose. Um, when she came home from treatment, she relapsed and, and um, passed away. And for years after that, I tried to do the same thing. Uh, I don't know how many countless times my parents were called in the middle of the night saying, you need to come down to the hospital because your son's going to pass away. And, um, you know, God, even though I wasn't there for him, he had a plan for me. He wasn't done with me yet. And I, I came into Teen Challenge totally broken. I lost my house. I had financed my cars, lost them, lost all my possessions, all my money. And it came in broken. And still didn't want to surrender completely. I wanted to give God certain parts of my life, but keep certain parts for myself. But I did complete that 13-month program. Um, it took about half the time going through there where I stopped climbing the walls and telling staff that I'm leaving. And, but I, I got through it. Um, after that, I, I had moved to Aiken and uh, found my wife in Aiken. I found a, somebody that I fell in love with. I got married right away, had another son, and, and he's four years old now. And he's the joy of my life. Um, but going through that process, my, my wife ended up leaving me uh, for somebody else. And, and at that point, 
I just wasn't surrendering everything to God, and I um, just just felt devastated. And I, I just wondered why. Why, God? You know, I went through all this before. I found happiness now. Why can't we stay married? Why? Why? But, so I fell back into addiction. I fell back into drinking. Drinking wasn't enough for me. Coming from addiction, I fell back into heroin. And wanted to be selfishly and, and just take my life. Coming in the Teen Challenge again, I thought I'd never go back. I, I, I used to joke about, a, you know, when, I, when I'd trip up, that the bus would pull up and take me back. And, and I'm like, there's no way I'm coming back. There's no way I can go through that program again. But when I came to the doors of Teen Challenge this time, I totally surrendered. Uh, God is in my life. He loves me. Uh, he's forgiven me. Um, and, and I've just been a new creation in Christ. And, and um, it's just been so powerful um, how God's using me. I found myself last week in the streets of Minneapolis, surrounded by drug dealers, and uh, sitting underneath a tarp at 10 o'clock, reading out of the Bible with some of the kids and homeless people there. Instead of carrying a gun or a knife, I carried my Bible and, and was out there passing sandwiches out and, and different things. And I thought, wow, God, God's not done with me yet. He's just begun. So thank you, church. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Stan. I'm uh, 32 years old, and I was born in Montana, and I moved here when I was seven. And um, I grew up in a very chaotic, violent, drug addiction family, and um, everybody in my family all was addicted to something. And um, very violent and very hard growing up. I was very alone. And uh, at the age of nine, I started doing drugs, rebelling against my family. And... Uh, by 13, I was a full-blown addict, and uh, not just doing drugs, I was selling them to at that age. And uh, 16 years old, my mom passed away, and uh, kind of was very traumatic. And I got deeper and deeper into my drug addiction and just kept spiraling out of control. And in and out of, you know, juvenile centers and just skipping school all the time because I didn't feel like I belonged and I, you know, was living a very sheltered life, sort of, you know. And um, by, uh, you know, older, I just kept going at it and going to jail and just never really having anything, no beliefs, no God. You know, I was atheist and um, just I was struggling really hard. And, um, 2012, I had my first child. And at that time, I sobered up, put myself into treatment. And, you know, I was doing good for a little bit there. And uh, I was sober for three years and, you know, got too comfortable and complacent and um, stopped using the toolbox that I got from treatment and relapsed and went really hard into it again and, um, and lost my children. We had a, a second son and lost my children due to our drug addiction. And that really messed me up. And I put myself into inpatient treatment at that time. And, you know, something had to change. And uh, I completed that, graduated uh, the inpatient program, and um, thought I had it under control. But somewhere in the middle of getting our kids back, we relapsed again. And we were just playing the system at that point. We got our children back and was pregnant with another child. And the whole time that she was pregnant with this child, like for most of the um, pregnancy we were using, and, you know, thank God that um, she was born perfect and a beautiful little baby, nothing wrong with her. And um, it, was, it was a really hard struggle, too. And, uh, you know, we got our children back, we were doing good, and we let the wrong people in our life. And um, me and her started fighting a lot at that time. And the drug addiction just got worse and worse. And, um, you know, I just kind of blocked everything out and, you know, ran from my family pretty much. You know, I got kicked out of the house and just ran off and was either the family or the drugs. And I chose the drugs at that point because I was so hard into it. And my children got took again. And um, that was devastating to me. And, you know, because we just got him back and worked so hard for it. And there was nothing I could do at that point in time. So 
So, you know, I, I wanted to die. And um, I upped the ante in my drug addiction and started uh, IV using and trying to kill myself that way. And, um, you know, just emotionally death to pretty much. And uh, I went to jail. And in jail while I was there, I uh, found God and started going to a lot of Bible studies. And, you know, I, I felt a little separated from him. I wasn't completely there yet. And um, I asked to go to Teen Challenge because I knew there was going to be hope. And um, I got accepted into the program and got into Teen Challenge. And since I've been in the Teen Challenge, I've um, been able to see my kids. And um, just a lot of blessings has happened. Um, gained a lot of weight, which is a very good thing. <laughs> um, and, you know, I've got a lot of good people behind me, a little a little too good at sometimes, Ricky. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's very, very awesome that uh, I have such a good uh, support group now and a bunch of awesome brothers and um, recovery coaches and, you know, counselors. It's, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more. I've been baptized and um, Jesus is in my life now and, you know, and it's just only going to get better from here. So, you know, um, thank you for having Good morning. I, I just want, my name is Josh. I'm 41 years old. And I just want to thank you guys for having us because I don't know if you guys can truly understand how much this helps the healing process in our journey. Um, this is as much for us, I think, as it is for everyone else. Um, getting this stuff out and sharing our story helps us get better. So thank you for having us. My story starts, um, I came from a very wonderful home. Um, my mom and dad have been married for 52 years and are still happily married. I have two older sisters. Uh, I had a real normal childhood. Um, grew up in Little Falls, um, graduated high school, went on to college, um, started coaching hockey at a very young age, which led me into the desire to become a teacher. Um, so I went to St. Cloud State, where I met my future wife, uh, got a degree in social studies education, uh, got a job in Faribault as a head high school hockey coach and uh, social studies teacher. And we were living the dream. Uh, we bought a house, we had our first child, got a dog. Um, so it was, a, it was a dream. And then um, in 2007, I, I had some back injuries from, from my, when I was playing hockey. And I ended up getting de degenerative disc disorder and I was prescribed Percocet. And that led into a full-fledged uh, painkiller addiction. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't know exactly what I was getting into, but I continued to do it over and over again until finally 2011 when I had surgery um, to uh, fuse the discs in my lower back. And I ended up having to go into treatment. I got off the painkillers and didn't think I was an addict, so I decided I could drink again. And within four and a half months, my wife was leaving me. I'd lost my job and uh, I was almost dead. And God saved me from that moment. And uh, my wife came back and I was sober then for two years. And then I hurt my back again and I got back on painkillers. And then in 2015, I stabbed myself in a drug-induced psychosis and my wife left me. And uh, from that moment on, I was just pretty much trying to get her back. And when she wouldn't come back, um, I decided to go full-fledged into the drug world and I became a meth user. And uh, for the last, oh, since that moment, I've been arrested nine times. I've been in nine different jails, and this is my ninth attempt at treatment. So um, it's been a mess um, since I got to Teen Challenge. And I was at Teen Challenge a year ago. I didn't think I needed the long-term program. Um, I was wrong. Uh, I did uh, some more market research and found out that I couldn't do it on my own. Uh, I got back here on July 19th of this year and uh, it's been absolutely phenomenal. I've accepted God into my life. Um, I felt like such a failure for so long um, and then I guess I'll just wrap it up with this. One of my favorite songs now is uh, So Will I and we listen to it in chapel a lot and uh, the last verse in there, the, one of the last verses, it said, and as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. And uh, I feel like that is what saved me, is that 
God has showed me that all, I'm not defined by my failures anymore. I'm a, I'm a man of God. I have two beautiful sons that are back in my life. Um, my mom and dad have their son back. My sisters have their brother back. And more, most importantly, my kids have their dad back. So thank you for having us. Hi, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my first name is Austin. Um, let's see, my addiction um, to mood alternating substances started off at a very young age, uh, similar to most of my brothers here. Um, so I was born in Brainerd, um, lived in Northeast with my mother, uh, father, and older brother. And I remember I was about like seven years old, and I was around drugs that were in the house um, due to my father's addiction and his friends, so marijuana and stuff. Um, so right up to an early start, um, I was just around uh, mood alternating substances, and I believe the first time I tried um, tobacco, I was about 12 years old, and then that led to uh, marijuana just two years later than that, so like 14 years of age, and then uh, that led to uh, methamphetamines. So yeah, I was about 17 years old, I think, when I first tried that um, with uh, family members as well. Um, which led to a full-blown addiction to um, drugs and alcohol, and meth was my drug of choice. Um, so that led uh, that. What, so God's been working in my life for a very long time, um, and I've been running from Him the whole time. Um, he's always been there for me through my addiction, and um, finally, I you know I've just come to realize it now. But um, prior to coming to Teen Challenge, I was lost in meth addiction. Um, I was just felt uh, dead physically, emotionally, and especially spiritually. Um, I had no faith in my life at all. Um, but God had placed people in my life that were uh, godly people, and I just, you know, I, I didn't realize it until now. So prior to coming to Teen Challenge, um, I was incarcerated due to a um, violation of um, felony probation, although I'm not a felon. Um, so, yeah, that's what led me coming to Teen Challenge. And while I was in Teen Challenge, I was uh, in short term, and I learned um, through the short term program that um, I was powerless um, over my addiction and that I had a problem. Um, prior to that, I didn't really even think I had a problem. Um, but, yeah, it got very bad. Um, I was starting to push the people that loved and cared about me and wanted what was best for me away from me. Um, and I just was not. Um, you know, not really liking the person I uh, was becoming. I'm um, just very evil um, due to the meth. So, uh, yeah, in short term, so I learned that uh, I was going to need the long term program. Um, and uh, so, prior to coming into the long term program, I've now been in the program for 13 months. Um, and I've had a spiritual awakening since I've been in this program. Um, I now, um, you know, if it wasn't for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I wouldn't even be here today. Um, standing here, never thought I'd be in choir singing um, at church at all, and here I am. So praise God for that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what saved me right there. It was uh, it was definitely God um, for my addiction. Kind of all over the place here. Um, so yeah, since I've been in the program, God's been doing great things in my life. Um, he has uh, delivered me. Um, I've received deliverance just lately from uh, demonic spirits. Um, he's restoring my relationships with my family, and he's still placing godly people in my life. Um, and I've just built a really firm, strong foundation through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit since I've been in the program. Um, and I believe God ha uh, is now calling me down to TCLI, um, which is Teen Challenge Leadership Institute, and I believe he has a calling of an evangelism in my life. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, listening to God and what he's telling me. Um, and it's, it's been really great. Um, he's told me that he's never going to leave me or forsake me, and he's just continuing to talk to me and um, just renew my mind. Um, I'm learning so much in the program. Um, it's uh, super important that um, we do our academics and stay in the Word, and that's how we're learning. And then uh, not only that, but listening to God. So um, worshiping and that stuff is really uh, helping us out a lot. I've received a tremendous amount of healing since I've been in the program. Um, it's just been really great, um, and I'm super excited for my future, and I have so much hope and faith um, through Christ. It strengthens me. Um, so thank you very much for having us today, and God bless you all. Yeah. 
Good morning. My name's Samuel. Um, I came from a family of addiction. Uh, my parents met in a treatment facility about 15 years before I was born. Uh, they were sober the whole time they, after that, but I had uh, older siblings that were much older than me. Um, I grew up very poor, in a very poor family, uh, just in a very, very small town um, north of Aiken a little ways called Swatera. We, um, as a baby, um, probably like two or three years old, we lived in an abandoned church there. I remember sleeping in the, uh, the balcony up top with my family. Um, then my mom got a job and we kind of, we moved into Hill City. Um, but she was gone at school all day and work all night. And so my older siblings took care of me, got me to school, got me back from school. At the age of five, we found some keys to the school for the janitors. And um, I just followed my siblings in and they were in there um, kind of terrorizing the place. And a fire ended up breaking out and burning some of the school down. And it led to them taking me from my parents. Uh, I was put into a, at the age of six, I was put into a home called Harbor Home in Brainerd in Boysport. Um, while I was there, I uh, suffered a lot of physical, mental, sexual abuse, very violent. I was in the hospital a lot from being abused so bad. Um, one time specifically, I come to in a hospital bed and the hair on the right side of my head was completely rug burned off from being slid across the rug. And I remember every day I used to cry, <clears throat> praying. I knew God before I, before I was taken. We went to church, so I knew who he was. I used to pray and beg every day for my family to come get me. Why don't you come get me? Why don't you want me? <clears throat> Led to a very dark place. I I grew to live in the darkness. I hated people. I I had no love for Jesus Christ or the Lord. It was quite the opposite. I grew to almost hate him. I rebelled against him. I would just ran through life 100 miles an hour just trying to escape everybody, especially myself. Never thought I was worthy of being loved or any affection, so I hated affection from anybody. As a small child, I'm going to go back, my sisters were older, so they'd have house parties, and I remember before I got taken, stacking beer bottles and cans up. You know, that was my way of playing as a small child. When I got home, I thought they didn't want me. Why did it take so long to get back into the house? I didn't know that they were fighting behind the scenes for me. I didn't see my mom fighting and doing all the classes that she had to to get me back in the house. I just thought they didn't want me because every day I prayed for them to come get me while I was being abused. They never showed up. When I did see my parents, I'd beg them, why won't you take me home? And they'd never, never take me home, so I grew to hate them and resent them. And by the time I got back in the house, I didn't want nothing to do with them. so. I ran, ran to the streets where I always knew, and uh, fell into the, a very bad crowd. Um, violence and drugs weren't, they were, that was something that was very normal to me. Um, I wanted everybody to be just as sad and depressed and lonely and scared as I was, mainly scared. I was scared of everything. Uh, when I was 16, I've known, I'd known her for a couple of years, but I met a very special girl. And uh, that was the first person I ever let into my life. Um, emotionally, intimately. When we were 20, we had a, we had a, a little baby boy. Uh, that day was the first time, he, when he was born, I didn't really have too much of a connection with him while he was in the womb because I didn't really realized he was real, I guess, until the day he was born. But when he came out, it was the most beautiful thing I ever seen. I seen a glimpse of the light in the storm that I was in. I guess you could say I got pulled into the eye of the tornado. 
but then I got pulled right back out of it real fast. I lost him and his mom because I was deep into my addiction and my way of life. I was not a very nice person. One time I lost all of her rent money when he was about six months old. So I had to get the rent money back before she got back from work. I took my son and I brought him on an aggravated robbery. Thankfully, the people knew who I was and knew who he was. They didn't call the cops on me. They called her. She left me. I haven't been with them since. I've seen them every once in a while, but I've been in and out of prison my whole life. Thanks to Teen Challenge and the Lord, I've been able to be reunited with him recently. I just thought I was a lost cause like everybody else. I have so many felonies that I'm an automatic prison commit. So this last time I got picked up, I had so many new charges. I just went in, tried to plead guilty and execute my sentence out. Prosecutors wanted to send me away probation. Everybody was on board for it, everybody. I don't know why, but that, that week in Itasca County, we had a visiting judge. And the visiting judge denied my execution. And we're all standing there looking at each other like, what's going on here? You know, I was ready to go to prison. I asked for it. And uh, I even actually kind of argued with the judge. I said, what do you mean? I said, it's my, it's my right to execute my files. And she goes, yeah, but I don't have to agree to it right away. I can keep you here for quite a while. And I'm going to make you fight me for it. She goes, I don't think this is the right choice for you. They offered me Teen Challenge. I ripped the paperwork up for Teen Challenge once before in my life. And the way I looked at it is they were offering me a way back home. My whole life I'd searched for my home. I searched for a way out of the way I was living. They offered me two ways to go. I finally came to the Y in the road. Go left and all I'll find is death. Go right and I'll find a life. I'll find a home. I'll find a father I never had find a family I never had. I chose to go right. I wanted a life. You guys ever heard that saying, Jesus take the wheel? To where I'd come in my life. Jesus take the wheel because I, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know how to drive no more. Thanks to a couple brothers in here, I've gained the courage to speak out about my molestation in my past. Thanks to the glory of God, the grace of God, I find myself on a mystical journey with these gentlemen back here. And I'm becoming a changed man. I get to video Skype my son tonight, and uh, he's supposed to have blonde highlights in his hair. He's a little dark boy, so. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys for allowing us to come here and listening to our testimonies. I want to thank all you boys, all you men. I love you guys. Appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Take your seats. Have a seat. Thanks, gentlemen. Those are some of the faces that we have in the program right now. Again, those are always volunteer for me. I always ask them to... Um, it, it, sometimes I feel like some of these guys like are... They're so good at what they're doing, it's almost like we're paying them to say it or something like that. But I, I just want to ensure that that does not, there's no coaching. It's on their own. We don't coach them. We don't tell them what to say or how to say it or any of that. And so I just want to thank you guys because really um, there is a point and a plea uh, that in all of this programming. Uh, there's a lot of things going on at Teen Challenge and it costs a lot of money. It's one of the cheapest run programs in the state. Hands down, without a doubt, it's a fraction of what it would cost to go anywhere else. I know that. I've seen the bills for a month of treatment at other places. Um, I know that we do what we do, and we do it incredibly effectively, and every dollar is counted for. I know that they um, 
I give great care uh, to all of those things, but it's not free and it's not easy. So our choir does do uh, some fundraising. We come out, we sing, we tell our stories, and we make an appeal to those people who have like minds. Uh, that's a part of our uh, source. But Teen Challenge also has broadened out, and we also do um, uh, licensed uh, treatment. And uh, that's what I'm in college for right now. I'm actually an intern, so I'm going to be a licensed alcohol drug counselor uh, in a few months, boys. So get ready. Uh, <laughs> Um, and uh, we get to give back that way. That helps us. Uh, so we have two separate pieces. We have the licensed treatment programming. Then we also have our faith um, Christian discipleship program. And they're very separate. And as long as we keep that separate, the government can't say much, right? Um, so uh, we do that. We do a good job at it, just making sure that the dollars go where they're supposed to be and we're not violating the government. And we're doing right by uh, the, the church members that we love and serve. Um, so what do we do? I mentioned that we do long and short term. We do outpatient and inpatient. Uh, we don't have a woman's program in Brainerd, but we do have them in Duluth, or I'm sorry, in uh, Rochester and down in the cities. We have a teen, teen camp that's run more like a nine-month school. And so our Lakewood Academy is on one of the most pristine, just phenomenal campuses in the state. If you know kids who are in trouble, uh, need, need, need help. It's mostly behavioral issues. It's less to do about addiction on the, the youth camp than it is... Um, then it has any to do with addiction. It's more uh, a lot of behavior issues, just getting a kid straight before he goes off the rails. Um, so they have a great program at Lakewood. Um, that's a little bit about what we do and um, how can we help you. I know that this is, a, uh, this is a, a very large number of people right here. And in any given congregation, if it's one in ten that struggles with alcohol, then somebody in here today statistically speaking, and I'm not pointing fingers because I don't know you, but if it isn't here right now today, then it's your neighbor. It's the one across the street. The one that everybody says is hopeless. And ain't nobody, can, you, nobody can help him or her. Um, we just want to, you guys to realize that, to recognize that, that we are your neighbors, that we're in your neighborhood. And we want to be there when you come across that person you know need help. Uh, and it'll happen, because every one of us knows someone who's struggling and needs help. And so we can help you. Um, I believe that we are the best at what we do. I believe that we do it very incredibly well and with great integrity. So that's what we do and how we can help you a little bit. How could you help us? Anybody ever heard of the fishing challenge? <laughs> I always start with the fishing challenge because I'm a little bit passionate about fishing. There's a lot of different ways, but one of them is the fishing challenge, the gala, the banquets, um, the golf challenge, um, different ways that we have different kinds of fundraising events that are fun, interactive, and um, also do uh, a great justice to uh, helping us to raise our budget every year. Um, so some amazing events. Um, how can you help us? We also have an incredible... A uh, 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 mentor team, Mr. and Mrs. Campbell are in the back today. Can you give me a little wave right back there? Uh, so all of these men, we have, we have a long list of guys who are signed up for mentors. And a mentor is someone who comes every week or two and, um, uh, or as often as they can to take one of these guys under their wing and to um, uh, mentor them. If you have a life in Christ, if you have any history, if you have any uh, ability to speak life, if you're excited about what God's done in your life, and you can share that with someone else, uh, it's really just a cup of coffee. That's the only expectation. Is get them out of there once in a while. It is so noisy A Teen Challenge with 65 guys. I can't even go in the, the cafeteria and not turn my hearing aids off. Like, it really gets on me, man. And they live in that 24-7 from a year. There's times they just want to choke each other out. And so if you can help them not do that, that'd be amazing. Um, you know, just get them out of there, man. Take them fishing. Take them, you know, if you got a good boat, brother, you know what I'm saying? That's some therapy right there. Uh, if you're a runner or a jogger, we'll try to match you up with your interests with theirs. How's that? And so the, it doesn't have to be just, you know, clueless. We're just the first one that comes along. We'll talk to you. We'll see what you love, your passion. And we'll talk to them. And we'll see if we can find you a gentleman who, who kind of can match up to that. So if you have a, a, a little bit of time, an hour, uh, a week or every other week or something like that, and you can give back, pour back. That'd be huge. So we want to uh, pump that uh, mentorship program. We take old cars, old boats, whatever it is, we'll turn it around. If you can push it, pull it, drag it, we'll come and get it. Uh, we don't care, right? Um, so uh, 
Um, we've been gifted um, crazy things. We got, well, actually, I use one of the boats right now, but, <laughs> but I hope it never gets sold. But uh, we're good at refurbing. We got a good time mechanic and a, a maintenance man, and um, so we'll, we'll do that. So those are different ways that you could help if you want. Um, maybe if it's not always financial, but uh, there's other different kinds of ways that needs that are represented there that you could do in a non-monetary way. So we would I'd love to help you if you should ever need us. If you have a friend, a neighbor, a loved one who's struggling with addiction, please call us. Uh, and um, that's all I have for today. Pastor Chris? All right. Thank you. I'm going to pray us out here, and then we're going to, as I said, exit and go down into the gym community center for our potluck lunch. Again, talk with these guys. Get their names. Get their stories. Pray for them. Pray for them. Be there for them. Cover them in prayer. Um, recovery is a lot of work. It doesn't come easy. Uh, and they're putting their time in, and they're trying hard. But they need people like you and me. They need family, they need friends, they need community members. They need all of us to help them see this through. Uh, this is a lifelong commitment. It's not something that's fixed today. They will forever be working on this. And so continue to pray for them. You may not remember 10 years from now the specific guy, but pray for their sobriety, pray for their recovery, pray for their endurance, and pray for them to truly be blessed. Again, guys, we are so thankful that you are here. We're so glad that you are here, and I promise you, we will be praying for you. With that, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each of these men and, and the men and women throughout this system. We thank you for Teen Challenge and the work that they do. We know, God, that through your power that you are doing far more in this program than just simply getting people off of drugs. Uh, you're changing lives. You're changing eternities. Uh, you're restoring families. You, you are building back up the broken and bringing hope. And God, every single one of us needs hope. All of us. We are sinners, all of us, lost in need of a Savior. Every one of us needs Jesus Christ in our lives. And so, Lord, pray in this moment for everyone who's hearing my voice that they would know you intimately as their Lord, as their hope, as the provider of all things, as the one through whom we can be redeemed. So, God, we thank you for that. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your commitment to us to chase after us even when we try to run away. God, as we go forth in a little moment, uh, your blessing upon us and those who provided the food that we're going to eat, and may it bless us that we might bring you all glory, honor, and praise in all things, and may it strengthen us to continue to share your love wherever you might send us. God, continue to be with us. We praise you in the high and holy and beautiful name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Again, thank you for coming. Welcome to Glory Baptist Church. The ushers are coming, and they will collect an offering, and then we will dismiss you here in just a moment. So hold on while they pass these. would invite you to give with joy, to give with generosity. It all 100% goes back to Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge. With that, again, we are blessed to have all of you here. If you are a guest and you need anything at all, let us know. Otherwise, go forth and serve your King to his glory. In Jesus' name, amen.